Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and namaste. Welcome to this episode of the podcast series, Igniting Joy. This is where we speak with individuals who are making a difference around them, in their communities, and in short, taking us one step closer to making this a better world. Today, I am in Sugarland, Texas, or Sugarland, Texas. Our guest will correct me in a little bit. Why am I here? I am at the Red Blue Arts Academy. The owner of this academy, the person who started this, and the one who I believe is an amazing ambassador of joy, has invited me here. And as I sit here, I look upon amazing works of art that he has created. And uh, this is an academy as well, and we will find out from him in a little bit. My guest today is Gopal Sen. Welcome to the show, Gopal. Thank you. Thank you. Gopal Sen is a renowned con American contemporary artist of Indian origin who has exhibited his artwork in rep reputed galleries and produced illustrations for books and magazine covers. He has been honored and widely felicitated for his work. In 2018, upon the invitation of Mayor Sylvester Turner of Houston, he accompanied a trade mission to India, making his art a force forging closer ties between the two countries. In 2019, he created a portrait of Mahatma Gandhi, which is now a permanent fixture at the Indian Consulate right here in Houston. He also did a wonderful portrait of President George H.W. Bush and presented it to the President's family on President's Day. Uh, the Red Blue Arts Academy is a testament to his spirit of resilience as it was opened during the height of the COVID pandemic. And we will find out a little bit more from him as to what went into this whole process. So this is the place. This, we're sitting right here at, in this academy right now where Gopal uh, works with a number of students across all ages. Now, before dedicating his life to pursuing art, Gopal enjoyed a very successful career as an executive at a major international hotel chain. There's so much to unpack here. So once again, an ambassador of joy, someone who's inspired me personally, Gopal Sen, welcome to Igniting Joy. Thank you. Thank you, Puneet. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. So while there is so much to talk about, let's start with uh, talking about this wonderful place we are sitting in. I can't get over how amazing it is. The Red Blue Arts Academy. You started this in early 2020. Correct. It's correct. when uh, most of the world was shutting down and people were fig trying to figure out what they should do with themselves. <clears throat> Excuse me, besides being on Zoom calls for work and kids who for the longest time were sequestered at home, I would like to think. I mean, not be able to go anywhere at all. Correct. So, Correct. so what was it that triggered you to, or what was the catalyst that got you to establish this amazing place? This, this is a beautiful space. And was, and was this open to them then, or was this online? Was, it wasn't open at that point. Obviously, I was doing only online classes. Mm -hmm. I, um, um, this was my life mission, Punita. Like I always wanted to make a difference. As you rightly said, I used to work in uh, corporate America for almost 25 years, mm -hmm. and I gave up everything to go for the life mission to make a difference to kids. We have a lot of um, kids, um, you know, uh, today's world, the world has changed. Uh, people are into iPhones and, and, and digital. Uh, and I wanted to bring in creativity uh, at its natural state. And I wanted to teach kids. And I've been doing it for the last 20, 25 years. I've taught over six, 7,000 kids. And I always wanted to have an academy where I can kind of make them sit down, make them feel at home and kind of teach them. With that mission, I started off. Yes, it was not the best of time, to be honest with you, but I never gave up hope because I believed, you know, it will get over and I will get started. So I used to do a lot of my online classes through here. I would take, give people a tour of this place and say, hey, guys, man, let's do it. And, and, and the beauty of it, Puneet, is that, um, yes, it was a game changer because I started getting people all over the country, all over the world. I had people from Canada, from Russia, from China, from India who were joining me because I kind of, I think I touched that chord with the kids to kind of reach out to them and try to, because, you know, 
uh, art um, i would say like you know being like you know uh, creativity is is a unique thing so everybody learns in a different way and i can visually kind of reach out to people and understand what are their strengths how i can kind of make a difference in their life to me this is so much of a passion that i would go out of my way to understand every kid and that's why parents could see that i could connect with these kids and make a difference people had a very different opinion before for online class how can you teach online art nobody could believe it i didn't believe it myself and then when i started it and i went out of my way to make that kind of the connection everything fell in place and i was teaching over 250 to 300 kids every single week from here wow and what was the impact on the students uh, i mean what do they say i mean what did you get any reaction from them as to was this making them because you see during the pandemic a mm-hmm. lot of people when they their normal lives are disrupted right 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 right, right, right. Uh, they felt like they couldn't function in many ways right. there were people had sort of you know issues um, affecting their mental absolutely, well-being absolutely. right so so, so, with so the kids was it a, was it a benefit to them absolutely because mm-hmm. see like parents were at mm-hmm. home mm-hmm. they didn't know what to do with these kids they were like you know they're going crazy with these kids mm. so here was somebody who was kind of reaching out to them and and as you know art is like a meditative thing it allows you to calm yourself down especially in a stressful moment yes maybe i should do some of you that should, you should you should you should but no. i'll be a bad student let me no, tell no, you no. <laughs> nobody is a bad student that's the thing i try to understand what kind of triggers people and i try to teach i teach uh, even adults mm. as you know and let's not talk about what triggers me <laughs> just in all transparency folks I'll they have to know i've known <clears throat> this gentleman for many many years so he n- might have an idea of what triggers me but we're not <laughs> going to talk about that here are we yeah. so okay <laughs> but no but thank you so much uh, right. for for sharing that now before we go further mm-hmm. i want to ask you this do you think that experience online was unique in its own way or it's always better for the kids to come in here as they do now Yes um so what i have done right now i'm slowly kind of i am in a transition state okay. i have classes like you know tuesday saturday sundays where i teach out here okay. and then the rest of the time i'm doing online i see so okay. so again um still people are a little as you know like you know covid is again coming back in certain mm-hmm. other ways mm-hmm. um so some people parents are still hesitant to send them i said that's fine you do it mm-hmm. online okay. if you want to come here that's fine we'll bring it out here especially with my out of station students they cannot come here it mm-hmm. get, they get a get mm-hmm. a chance to kind of learn from me and and make a difference and and again if you look at my reviews and all that like people love the classes and that's what is the biggest blessing for me i feel like i make the difference kids like love coming to my classes parents write to me all the time like you know they would miss any other class like you know but they will not miss your art class because you you bring that kind of vibration in them back so that is my blessing of god that i could do it and i continue i i pray that i can continue to do that for the rest of my life there is a beautiful caption out there i just read that and i've heard others talk about this in some write ups on you as well um you've often said that you think of yourself as a poet who writes with his brush was that always your thought about yourself or is that something you discovered well i i i don't write as well as you punit so i have to paint <laughs> so yes um yes um but see okay. i i believe in i am a contemporary artist mm. and i believe that you know it should be art should be thought provoking when you're looking at my art it should provoke an a thought and it's so when when i say like you know poetry in the sense like if you look at modern poetry it depends on the individual who's looking at that or reading that poetry it makes different meaning because everybody is going through different life experiences and everybody looks at life in a very different way the world is same that's why we call maya we have illusion everybody is looking at so nothing is real so everything is a illusion and but it depends on the observer the only real thing is consciousness so depending on that i create my art so people look at it and they find a meaning to that it provokes some kind of a feeling in their mind and that's what i want to do okay. so that they don't walk away just look at the art and walk away they're like what is the artist trying to say wow i i like it i don't know what it is but i love it and that's what it should be 
So, so when you approach, when you feel inspired that you're going to create this new painting, or mm-hmm. uh, it, it's, do you approach it with a very purposeful, uh, in, in a very purposeful manner where you say that I think I want to insert this meaning into it? No. Or does it just come to you? It comes to me. So you said the word inspired. What does it mean? Mm-hmm. In spirit. So when I paint, I am in spirit. I leave my body and mind away. Just like a, like you know, a Muslim goes to the mosque, they take out their shoes and they go inside. I do the same thing. I leave my body and mind and I'm working through in spirit. So I let my spirit, I let my subconscious take over, which connects with the universal intelligence and something is created. I have no control over it. Sometimes I'm painting and I'm looking my hand painting and I, I can see my hand doing it. I'm just a medium out there. And that is the beauty. I'm telling you, Puneet, like it is a different kind of a feeling. That's what I, I, I tell people. I love what I do and I do what I love because that is the creation of God. You're just a medium. I'm nobody. I'm just creating something. But it's coming through me and I'm blessed that I can do that. This is beautiful. And uh, some of you out there, if you're you know, listening to this, uh, if you've had similar experiences, you will know what our guest today, Gopal Sen, is talking about. Um, is a little, I know this, this is a conversation with you, but I have to share this about my own personal experience. Right. I have experienced on stage, because um, I haven't done a lot of theater lately, but um, that will always remain a first love, because performing in front of a live audience is always a whole, it's, it's a whole different game. It's, Absolutely. it's a very different uh, experience. Mm-hmm. But there have been moments on stage when I have felt what you just described as just a medium through which something is getting communicated. Correct. You know, you are on stage, you are aware of the sets, you're aware of other actors, you're aware of what you're doing. And of course, you've rehearsed it a million times, so the lines are just flowing. But it's almost like you can observe yourself from the outside, Absolutely. and it is just happening. And um, and I'm sure, like people come and say, "What a great performance, Pinit!" And you're like, "Man, I didn't do it. Like you know, it came through me." You well, know? I don't know. Not very many have said that, but maybe they will. Okay. But um, uh, but you know, I you know, other people who have done a lot of meditation say that's and and, I, and you said that word as well, meditative experience. And that's why I felt I just had to share. So forgive the indulgence no, 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 absolutely, uh, here. Absolutely. But uh, it's, it's exactly that. People have said that is a meditative experience. No, you're being mm-hmm. humble. You're, you're an amazing artist and I, and I respect your art. Oh, thank uh, you. You know, in your art form. So you're very we'll, kind. We'll talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, we are here with renowned contemporary American artist Gopal Sain. And we are going to talk about his story, not mine. <laughs> so... And of course, since I've known him for so long, if I occasionally address him by a different name, I hope you don't mind because no, I feel like saying Neil because that's what we said, you know, before you, you, you became so famous that you had to go by your official name. <laughs> but uh, folks, um, uh, we are again having a great conversation here in case you're tuning in now uh, with renowned American contemporary artist Gopal Sain from Houston, Texas, or Sugarland, Texas, more specifically, right? Mm-hmm. So let's change tracks a little bit, sure. right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, part of what we do on the show is we play music. <laughs> and uh, let us see what you picked. You have picked this song. I am going to play this, and then we will talk a little bit about it. So, And folks, you will hear the full track at the end of the episode, but for now... Let's see what our friend has picked for us. Thank 
क्योंकि तुम ही हो अब तुम ही हो नियल <laughs> चैन भी मेरा दर्द भी मेरी आशिकी अब तुम ही हो दीज वर्ड्स ओ माई गॉड वॉट्स गोइंग ऑन हियर अमेजिंग सॉन्ग इट्स एन अमेजिंग सॉन्ग एंड फोक्स इट्स अ सॉन्ग संग बाय अरिजीत सिंह फॉर द फॉर अ वेरी पॉपुलर फिल्म आशिकी टू इट केम आउट अ फ्यू ईयर्स अगो राइट एंड आई थिंक दिस सॉन्ग शॉर्ट uh i mean did wonders for arjit singh's popularity i think um but tell tell me why this song so, and what's the deal here <laughs> so I, i i used to love this song but i i played this this song was played when i proposed to my wife so i don't know whether you know puneet and we uh, we were in schoolmates but um i fell in love with this girl when i was um uh coming to america and we were supposed to get married unfortunately uh it was not meant to happen at that point and i left for america for her for higher studies because her dad wanted me to anyway so and i came here and i lost her for 22 years and i found her back after 22 years and i proposed her with this song because every moment for the 22 years all these art you see it came through that because of my of my you say today like i'm spreading joy because i feel there are a lot of like you know broken hearted people in this world and i never gave up because i believe in the law of attraction um that he, he, she was there somewhere i didn't know even where she was and i found her on facebook and then we connected after 22 years and wow. that's when i played this and i thought today's conversation was going to be all about <laughs> joy and more joy and more joy and there was no pain anywhere in this no. but there was a little bit of pain a little bit of heartbreak but it Absolutely. looks like it's an amazing uh, you know it's almost like a hollywood or yeah. even uh, you know an a hindi film or a bengali film ending yeah. where right uh, right it's, right it's it's yeah, a it's great amazing. happy ending yeah, yeah. and um, uh, so that's the best thing which happened in my life and it changed to me forever and i'm grateful to get her back in my life and i'm the happiest soul i'm just i'm just grateful to god for having her in my life wow uh so 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 is is, is at this point do you want to say something to your better half uh, who's out there perhaps listening to our conversation well you know um she knows it and i tell her every day i don't forget telling her every morning how lucky i am to have her in my life i'm grateful oh. to have uh, our daughter um who who's the blessing um she loves me to death and 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 you know we 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 rejoice and we enjoy every moment together uh, all the years we missed out we try to make it up wonderful folks we are speaking with renowned american contemporary artist gopal sen who we just found out is an amazing romantic as well <laughs> and has one of the great love stories that you might think of that you know might be the subject of a movie or a book or a show or a series or what have you he has experienced that in his own life and perhaps that joy of uh, and a little bit preceded by pain and perhaps heartbreak you know, is what's reflected in all his artwork exactly and i think through his art which i think is his superpower he is uh, trying to make this world a much better place um but uh, before we get all very mushy about that let's ask you sure. another question or two is that good yeah absolutely so as the as folks have now found out that mm-hmm. we've known each other for many years right sometimes i call you neil mm-hmm. and uh, it's but uh, that was not when we knew each other back then mm-hmm. years ago mm-hmm. you were not this artist that we're talking about today right, of right. course you 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 were an artist always i mm-hmm. think but mm-hmm. you know this you know recognition that you have now uh, was obviously came in time right it came in due time my mm-hmm. question is 
if you could go back mm-hmm. and advise that 18 year old person mm-hmm. right who was who knew that they had this art within them that needed to come out and what 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 advice would you give them in terms of life choices or career choices or love or whatever <laughs> well you know one thing i would say like you know i'm a passionate person mm. and i believe like you know i i live for the passion mm. of things and 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 i believe like you know i was always an artist at heart but you know again as you know puneet it's very hard mm. art art when you're a, a, a artist it's it's um, uh, it's a hard life you know let's be honest like you know there are too many starving artists in this world and but i believe that if you're passionate about it if you go for excellent things will fall in place that belief you have to that's why i meditate that's why i believe in the higher things of that you have to continue to work on yourself continue to give your best not expecting result right away because things will fall in place in due course of time sometimes it may take years to come by sometimes it'll come faster than you can believe it so the younger folks i would say if you are really if you have that music playing in your heart don't give up don't give up believe in that one day you will touch because see we there's too much going on in this world and today we need art more than ever right so we want to connect with people through art any kind of art whether it's music whether it's dance whether it's art form it should be there and that makes us human right that is our biggest difference between machine and human beings and so that's true. what i believe in and and i want to honestly puneet connect that to our next generation they are losing out on the true creativity of things they're getting i would say uh, distracted by the digital world like the facebooks again i'm nothing against facebooks and instagrams and and stuff like that yes, but yes, you know it's we not, need to do yes not that we are against facebook i just want to make <laughs> that clear or any other such platform yeah. <laughs> but 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 what I, but the point i'm trying to make is that they got to learn creativity because it's it's like what i what i do is that with kids i work with i work with a lot of add kids i work with kids who have other issues what i'm doing is that i'm trying to f- increase their focus that is number one thing by people coming to my art classes they are becoming better in studies i help them in hand and eye coordination that gets better they become better listeners so art has a huge meditative state yeah you cannot expect kids to do a meditation like we do but at that age art allows them that 45 minutes one hour they don't talk in my classes because i make them get into that focus they they are loving every moment of it they're feeling every art they're doing it's not that they are just coloring they are like feeling what they're doing when i tell people like you know if you're drawing an apple feel the apple feel like you're touching the apple it is a real apple is no longer two dimensional is a three dimensional as soon as you feel it becomes real that is the beauty of it it is not about techniques it is about feeling wow i mean i i mean i i'm speechless because it's like i couldn't have said it better and it's, this is something i've been trying to communicate to folks in other places for other reasons but i think in the end it is all about the feeling mm-hmm. because that's what sets us apart from let's say robots correct <laughs> correct correct but uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing that insight and uh, we, we may not have uh, time to discuss a lot of things uh, you know on this podcast today but maybe we'll do another round later and talk to you about what you do but i certainly would like to sign up for some kind of coaching from you <laughs> folks he's also a life coach as we are beginning to find out um so before we wrap up our you know conversation today for the purposes of this podcast uh are there any insights or any other thoughts you want to share or even tell us give us more details about your amazing romance <laughs> <laughs> I I'm a private person that I'll keep it because you asked me that question I said it but you know I can say I'm I'm again very fortunate and lucky to have because you know uh, when I used to paint and and this is a good point your point uh, if you were to look at Puneet some of my artwork 12 15 years ago it was very dark 
And that's why you see a lot of these well-known artists. Mm. They're very dark because mm. the sadness kind of way. And now you see it has evolved. It's a very mm. phobistic kind of paintings mm. right now. You see so much of colors. Mm. That's a lot I'm of saying. color, folks. There's yes. a lot of color here. Yeah. So I'm sharing mm. that color mm. and, and that happiness mm. and that bliss in, 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 in to, to my audience. Mm. And that's what I believe in now. And, and, and hopefully... Um, I'm, I'm blessed again. There's a lot of good uh, personal collectors of mine around this country. And uh, again, I will continue to do this. You're being very humble. You haven't yet told us about the fact that there was a book that, that you've done recently. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I was hoping you would mention that. Uh, yeah. And, and I know this, that was supposed to be my final question, but I just remember that you, in all humility and in all your modesty, you haven't brought that out. Well, um, you know, this is a gentleman out here who was inspired by my life. Um, you know, I was a hotelier and I became an artist. Very few people does that because, you know, when usually people go from passion to profession. I went from profession to passion. So I started... Well, tell us a little bit about that. Yes, because, you know, again, um, the good part of it is that I was well settled. I was doing very well in my corporate world. I was making a decent amount of money. And then when I went to art... I was not like, you know, most artists go through this period of like, oh my God, I'm going to pay my bills. I'm going to uh, live a life. But I didn't have to worry about that in the beginning because, you know, I had a decent flow of it. And then when I felt like the time was right, I could move from my profession to my passion. As I said, I didn't want to die with the music inside. So I, I you know, this gentleman wrote this book um, on me about how... Um, uh, hotelier became an artist and how he changed and he's been he knows me for almost 25 years and he he's a hotel um, a Houstonian and uh, and he's seen me through the years and he's seen that amazing change in me and he said like you know uh, I've never seen a person change so much in uh, in my life and that's why he wanted to write on me like you know how this person slowly had the the guts, the you know, because it's very easy said than done. Like people say, oh, I'm going to change and leave everything and become an artist. It doesn't happen that easy. There's many of us who've tried that. Some are still trying and mm -hmm. some have failed and some are going back at it again. So I think you actually stand out there as a beacon of hope for all these people who are trying to follow their passion after having devoted a lot of energy to their profession. So tell us the name of the book. You can say it in Bengali and then explain it. It's called uh, Shabdo well. Sriti Asha. Basically, sound, um, memories, and um, hope. And okay. I am about hope. So it has three sections on it. And mm. I'm about the hope part. And, and I'm kind of uh, talk about, you know, who am I? What am I doing? A little bit, which I explained to you, mm. that I realize every day, um, you know, art is... Um, I, I, I was... I never believe like you know i will become an artist i never believed in that like you know but a time came by and i felt like you know um it is time for me to move on and make a difference in life and not only through my art but through my teaching um making people understand even like adults who come to my classes they're like oh my god i, I didn't know i could paint like that i'm saying because you were learning in a different way I was, i'm teaching you a different way of learning it's all here if you can, you know, let yourself go, I think everybody innately is creative. We just don't know about it. I, you know, I agree with you on that 100%. Like I was having this conversation last night as well with somebody and I said, there is an artist inside you. And this person, after they had, we spoke for a while, said, actually, you're right. I just realized what I do every day is very creative. I said, there you go. It just has a different outlet. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, the folks... Uh, I mean, thank you for sharing uh, about the book as well. And uh, you were being very modest by not mentioning it earlier. And uh, I really want to focus in on something our guest Gopal Sen said today, and that is he is the hope part of this book. And that's the reason why we are having this conversation here with him today. Hope has to be there. Otherwise, hope and joy go together. Let's put it this way. Hope can bring about joy, and joy can bring about hope. And it's always, I think, they go together. Absolutely. And um, by doing what you do, by inspiring others, by helping them experience joy, giving them a shot at it, I think you are, you are in a joyful state as well. Yeah, because I believe in positivity. 
You want to be positive always, yeah. like, you know, believe in yourself and keep going. Yeah. I think I, I, I relate to people like, you know, going through this pandemic, yeah. you know, has made people very negative in life. Oh, my God, what's going to happen? Yeah. But you know what? If you have that positivity inside and believe that things will fall in place, it is a matter of time. I'll change it. I will keep on working on myself. I'll keep on. I cannot change the world, but I can change myself. That's all I believe in. That one person I have control over is myself, not anybody else. I don't control anybody, whether it's my kids or wife or family or anybody, but I control myself. I look at myself, okay, Gopal, what did you do today? How could you make a difference? And I'm always kind of being my own parent. I'm always kind of judging myself and say, how can I be a better person? How can I make a better difference too? Not like showing off, but, you know, trying to sincerely trying to make a difference. And I think sooner or later people understand that. And these parents and people who I'm teaching, they're like, oh my God, you are in a different day. Because, you know, I, because I, I truly want to make a difference. And I cannot explain to you even more because that has become my life mission. I think you have explained it as well as anybody possibly can. So again, no, you're no, being very I, humble. I, I, and I'll tell you why. Because when you say that you, the positivity is important in this and going after it and not giving up is important. You know, you have shown by example, so you don't have to necessarily put it in words. What you've done with, you know, you're going from your career, and many people would be very, very reluctant to give up what that comes with and take a chance on following one's passion. But you've created this beautiful world. And don't say for a minute that you cannot change the world. Because we believe, folks, on this podcast that every single person who is making a change in their own lives, making a change around them, is impacting the community around them. And one person at a time, one community at a time, I think we are taking steps to make this a better world for everyone. So don't say that. And again, thank you so much for inviting me here. Well, thank folks, you. Thank no, you this coming. has been absolutely amazing. And uh, folks, in case you're wondering and maybe you are a little anxious about uh, the fact that you can see what I can see, there is going to be a little video later on um, uh, about this episode. And you will get to see some of the beautiful artwork that I've had the privilege of experiencing right here. Um, thank you again. Um, thank and, you, folks. Uh, that's our conversation today with renowned American contemporary artist Gopal Sen. Thank you. Ruckus Avenue Radio.